Okay, we are live. Episode two of a special episode uh, for marketing series. So this is episode two of marketing series. We're doing all these little subsets this year. Adam Brown, Circle Media, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Good to be back. We're going to talk digital specifically because that's your niche. We're going to talk digital, social media, all the platforms that you guys dive deep into for CPG brands in order to help others who may watch this, right? Give us your take on TikTok right now. Who's using it? How are they using it? And maybe give me like one that you like, like one shout out of why you like what they're doing. Well, everyone's using it. So that's that. Whoever you're targeting, whoever's listening to this, they're on there. Um, so don't, don't get so cute thinking that it's all young people or all dancers. It's everybody. Um, every brand that is selling a product to a consumer should have a TikTok strategy. It doesn't have to be one size fits all, but you need to have a strategy. At this point, you're late if it, as far as strategy goes. Uh, I'm a big fan of a lot of brands. I really like what Poppy does. Um, and the main reason I like what they do is that they have the best recipe of episodic, so consistent episode type content face and camera with at least one, but they have a couple of different people and they use the founder and the office as a backdrop for really good behind the scenes storytelling. I think they're doing that. They're one of the best doing it that way. And that is the formula that works right now. Staying on the platform for right now, TikTok. Um, again, people are trying to get into it. Some may feel like they're too old for it. They're, they don't understand it. You call it don't be binary. You I don't know how you say it. Um, but they have to be in there. And it's not what some may have thought it was. Ah, it's an, a younger cr crowd. My kids use it, all that. People are on there. Their customers are on there. Even if they don't think that they are, they are. What would you say would be the first tip for someone or a brand to just get going? Turn on the camera, record yourself doing a few things and just post them without any understanding and without any thesis of what's going to happen. Just record yourself and post it. Then see what happens. Then spend two times the amount of time. So if that takes 10 minutes, spend 20 minutes. So a 30 minute commitment just looking at brands that you think in your gut might be doing TikTok well. Just think about a brand that you think does a good job, go onto their TikTok. You'll be surprised if they're not, but I think more than likely you're gonna find they are. And then start understanding, and it'll be very intuitive to you what they're doing and why it's working, which will then help next week's round when you do your 10 minutes, because now you'll have a recipe for something you might wanna actually try based on what other thought leaders have done before. It's the easiest platform to do what I just said on, even more than Instagram eight years ago, and even more than Facebook 12 years ago. Uh, you can go in low, low input, high outcome. What would you say for those that may be able to get other people to potentially put the content up for them? Are there strategies there for them to introduce that content in an easy way? If so, kind of give me the one, two, three bullets on that. Yes, yeah, so I would argue that every brand should have, in addition to, and not necessarily in lieu of, one junior digital native that knows TikTok. You can have an intern, you can have a hourly wage person local, which I think is a good play, but you should have somebody in your ecosystem that can consistently put their face out there. Even if you have a founder like, like yourself that's open to it, you just are going to get busy. You're just, you're old. You're just not going to be as good at it. So having somebody that can do that in addition to you, not only will it make, the, make you consistent, but I actually think it'll make you, the founder, raise your game. So the whole tide will raise for the account. Love that. Um, I, again, I think I want to stay here for just one more second. Uh, TikTok, it's, it's kind of like the, it, it's the, the thing that people are talking about most, right? They're talking about it, which is very important because you have the ability today to actually get some traction there. You could get a hit. You could get something that goes viral. 
you can't really get that on other platforms anymore. You're not going to get it on Instagram and or Facebook, not that way, not organically, right? So it's because there's less of the rush, right? It's almost like we could talk about LinkedIn and, and all that. They're, they're the early adopters, right? We're able to get some of the rush stuff. There's still this opportunity because not everyone is on there. So again, it's kind of point, shoot, click, post, right? And then do what you're saying, which is go look at some other players. What are they doing? How are they doing? And then you realize they're not doing anything really special, right? This is so easy in an environment today when you have your phone and you can literally just turn it around and start shooting. So uh, again, kind of uh, early adopter right now, newer brand, emerging brand that hasn't really played there, give them that 30 seconds that they'd be coming to you to pay for, right? As far as getting them started, give it, give it to them one more time. I tell every brand to just do this on their own. I sell them out of not working with me because the real recipe is either the founder or a junior person doing it themselves, turning on the camera and going and different than other platforms. Other platforms came on slower. You could sort of see it coming, wait for the wave and then ride the wave. It's, uh, TikTok went from 14 months ago being non-relevant and not on any of my clients' radar to leapfrogging, not from like fifth to fourth, but from fourth to second and arguably first as the primary platform that they should be focused on for the serendipity of organic reach that you just said, for the power of the paid platform, which we haven't even talked about yet, which is insane targeting, very well caught, very good cost, putting, putting in front of the right eyeballs. Um, and you don't have to be perfect. Whereas Instagram from the jump, you kind of wanted it to be looking good. And so that means you need a creator. Instead of the creator behind the lens, it's much more about the creator in front of the lens now, which just changes the game. The difference between TikTok and LinkedIn, I do, I'm an agency and I do B2B sales, right? I do almost nothing from my LinkedIn account for my business. I do it for my persona. Flip it for TikTok. TikTok cares nothing about your business. They want to see the people. So you have to show that episodic facing camera, Mark, a junior person, a super fan. So it's just a totally different philosophy. And if you grab that person, um, find somebody, a digital native, young, find them on uh, online, find them on Indeed, find them on a college listserv, whatever it is, and put them to work. You can be active and successful on TikTok within 24 hours. I don't think you could do that anywhere else. Love that. Okay. So the people just got five minutes of TikTok look free. Boom, bang, use that. There you go. Moving over. Let's go to Instagram for a second. Uh, your clients asking you, what are we doing on here? How are we going to make it work? Uh, what are the what are sort of the the things we are looking for as far as results? Uh, give me that thirty second to just frame it up, and then I'll go into a Q and A. Zero organic reach on the feed, so don't focus there. It's all paid. So if you're going to put out content, plan on putting paid dollars behind it. Very effective. Cost is way down compared to Q4. It's a really nice time to have focused quality content with paid dollars behind it. The only place I think that's really, really attractive for me right now, as far as a growth area on Instagram, is in Reels. We're seeing really nice organic reach in Reels. Everybody sleeps on Reels. They do a lot of stories. They spend all the time on the grid. Reels is the secret sauce if you want visibility. So if you could put together some good video content, which a lot of brands are doing now, make sure that you have a Reels strategy uh, implemented as part of your plan. You got to differentiate that for anybody who doesn't understand the reels. How, how do they get in there? Uh, is it literally on the platform? You open up Instagram, folks, it's there. You just don't really realize it. And again, you're not going around and taking a look at what the other players are doing. I don't know if you have a shout out on that one too. Maybe they could just go to it. Do you know specifically who's playing on there? Um, not, not a lot of brands, okay. uh, to be honest Good. with you. Uh, it's definitely lower frequency than most, most, uh, brands. Like we, we've been dabbling, not to give a shout out. We work with a good Chris company. It's a great client, great brand, great people. And they allow us to just do things. We don't really have to get it approved, which is a big differentiator. Shout out anybody that's hiring an agency or like a leader, let them do what they do at least 80% of the time. Otherwise you're going to be compromised no matter what. They let us do what we do. We've had some really nice results. We see the same thing we posted on TikTok, same thing on the feed and same thing on Reels and Reels is outperforming organically. And to answer your question, when you go into Instagram now, 
it asks you right away, is this going in the feed? Is this going on the reels? Like it asks you up front. So it's very, very intuitive. Next time you're about to post a video, skip over the feed, try the reels and see what happens. Shout out, Matt. Matt, I, I mean, that was free, bud. So I don't know what's happening. Anyway, um, okay. Now we're going to get back to the actual platform that of Instagram going again. And we're on Instagram, everyone. Listen, here, here's, here's one that you're going to probably be thinking. He's going to shoot this down right now. We want more followers. That's the theme, right? Adam, we want 10,000 more followers by March. What do you, what do you, what do you have to say about that? <laughs> I, I don't get them a lot anymore, but I just got one just like yesterday. Same thing. And it, we actually thought to ourselves, it's actually not that unreasonable, the number they gave, but it was still like all they wanted to talk about. So now we're all scrambling. And what does that mean? So we're going to have to do contests. We're going to have to do giveaways. We're going to have to do all this stuff. But if you think about it, if I'm going to do a giveaway and I'm going to get somebody to take an action to win something of value. Like I'm going to give away a Peloton bike. Why would I rather get the follow than their email or their SMS or get them to engage in some way or to tag a friend? There's so many things I would do before follower. Also, most of our brands are early stage brands. I bet most brands that listen to this are early stage brands. A lot of times they're regional, right? So if you have 100,000 followers in the Bay Area because Mark's from San Francisco and then you roll out in Publix, it's irrelevant how many followers you have because none of them live in Florida. So let's get away from the craziness and remember the spirit of who your followers are is how many people you can reach. The people you can reach is with good content, some of the tactical stuff we just talked about and paid social support. And I guarantee if you're using paid social support, you're not targeting your followers, you're targeting new eyeballs. That's uh, very valuable. Um, I, I'm going to then jump right into that geo idea, right? Uh, that's going to be on the pay, sort of the back of retail support. That Instagram, we can TikTok, it, all the platforms we'd ever talk about. You can do all of this, right? We just did. We, we, when I ran into Walmart, you said turn into Mason was with me. We did this thing at Walmart. I love like, that. If, if, if you don't get it, you know, if you don't understand that, I don't even know what how, you. You're not going to understand any of this, right? It's simple, right? And so, well, let's say on Instagram with retail support with sort of on the back of what you just said, what should they be doing? They just launched in SOPAC region, Southern California region of Whole Foods. Is there a strategy that they should be focused on rather than them asking you, we need 10,000 more followers. What would you be saying as far as a strategy behind that retail or regional play on something like that? So I think you like, you bust out a map, like a military precision strike. First, you need aerial support. So it's ads, fans of Whole Foods who also like granola, who also like our two biggest competitors, um, who live within like a certain mile you know, radius around these zip codes and who shop at Whole Foods. That's a motion graphic asset. Here's Richard's rainwater. Here's why it's the best water on earth. Here's where you can find it. Here's what aisle it's in. And the payoff is Whole Foods. You run those ads as aerial support. Then there's foot traffic support. If you can hire someone like Social Nature that can send a bunch of people in there, you can hire a platform like Mini Social that will get targeted influencers to go and do a sort of action item list of what you want to do. Or you can have somebody on your own internal team or a company like ours find gifted influencers, paid influencers, and super fans all in that area. And they have to go in, grab the product, take it off shelf, not just smile with it, but take it home, use the product. And then open you up for whitelisting, which basically allows you to run ads on their account with their likeness. So you have the aerial support, the foot traffic, and then you're just flanking them with the whitelisted ads of just momentum and a lot of support. That playbook run for six weeks over and over is the playbook that not only for vanity metrics tells the buyer how you're supporting velocity, but it actually moves the needle and drives up velocity. Uh there's another ten thousand dollars of value uh, right there in forty five seconds. Uh, this might be this is going to be one of the best one of the best ones that we put out again because this is pure fire value that anybody who's in the game right now should just watch. They're going to watch this fifteen minutes, and if you didn't get something out of it, I don't know. I, I don't know. I'm, I don't. I, I'm, I don't know. Slap me. Slap me. On the back of that. Let's talk about also the retailer 
people forget about this. They're always, when they walk in, just so you know, on the sales side, everybody, we walk in, we all have the same deck. We all say the same things. Oh, we were better than that person. Then that person walks in and they got you on the same page. It's really weird. Anyway, <laughs> but we, we, we talk about social support, maybe our, our own social platforms. This is what we look like. This is what we're doing. This is how we're going to support you. Don't forget that a lot of those same people, maybe the buyer or team members are hanging out on, on social media. When they see your ad, that's a good thing. And so there's a lot of those miscellaneous value pieces that I think brands and or would be brands that want to try this forget about. Like you've got to pay to play, but you don't have to pay a lot. Just get it going, right? Just get it in there. Are you able, to, is this part of the playbook that many that are coming or in your portfolio now are doing? Is it talked about as much, right? That sort of retail, the partnership aspect of everything that they're doing. It's not just customer, right? I wanna hit 1000 customers in, in the San Diego area that go to you know XYZ. How effective is that and how important it is, is in the strategy that you talk about with the brands? It's everything. We, we're starting an influencer department. We tried to start it last year. We got busy. We had to like reshuffle the personnel. We just had a meeting right before I came in here. They're sitting outside my door right now. And I said, we could eat for days on just that retailer velocity support influencer campaign, not only for all our clients, but for every client we don't work with. It's the mission critical. It's the must have ingredient that you're implementing so that the buyer knows you're supporting them. And so do the key stakeholders. Uh, I just spoke with Wade uh, Yenny the other day. I never met him before. I spoke to him last week. That guy knows the business. He, I didn't even, he's from Ohio. He's living in Southern California. And when you change retailers, what the retailer you're at matters. Is it natural? Is it a supermarket? Is it big box? Is it 4,000 stores? Is it a hundred stores? Like you have to know the DNA of what we're talking about. Remember it's a human. So the retailer talked to the buyer. What has worked before? What's a hero that became a zero? What's a zero that became a hero? What did they do? What do you like to see? What would you recommend? Give me, I'll pay you a hundred dollars for advice. What would you do if you were me putting my product in your shelves? You'll get feedback especially from the good ones that have been around. Not, not somebody who's right out of school, but somebody who's been around, which a lot of these uh, retailers have. They want to know that they're in the social game as well. Most retailers have a weak social game. So that when you can start explaining what you're going to do and show them the playbook of, of how you're going to bring value to their organization, it has a lot of value. The cherry on top is when you tell them about the super fans and the influencers that you're going to bring into their stores. Because guess what? When they come in the store, more likely, they're not going to just buy the product. They might grab some gum. They might grab a fruit. They might grab some granola. Who the hell knows? So they want those people in the store because that's going to add a lot of value and probably raise the average ticket value above and beyond the one product they need to get for you. It's why I really like social nature. I said to social nature, does it bother a retailer when they know that they're like, we're bringing highly active shoppers who like to buy the products that they're selling in their stores. And people don't just go and grab one water and leave. They get other products, which is good for the whole ecosystem. Shout out social nature. That was second one. Um, funny, I was, that was, they were brought up to this morning, Aaron uh, talked about. So, uh, so that's could be a whole, actually I should do a special on that one. I'm going to go now into moving from TikTok. We went Instagram. Now we're going to just go influencers in general. Well, you and I have been talking about this for so long now. It's just, And you and I have the same methodology as far as micro. Like we both like that micro, like that person with like 3,000 followers. There's a lot more impact, but that's the whole other episode, right? It can be its own episode, but we're going we're gonna to cram it right now and get three minutes of influencer discussion. Where are you going for influencers? What are you looking for? And how can you really gauge the metric, right? It doesn't have to be like, you know, everybody's dollar and like did it transact and, and give them a code and all that. But let's like, let's compartmentalize for a second. Talk influencer for a second. What do you like and why? Well, first off, I think you have to reverse engineer what you want and what is success. And it, of course, success is retail store lift or sales. But re in reality, you need certain things. So you need content that's UGC or PGC that's not yours. So right there, an influencer can bring that. 
Um, you need somebody that's authentic and engages. So right there, you can just see, do they engage? People ask questions, doesn't matter, are a thousand followers, a hundred thousand followers? Are they highly active and is it a dialogue? If it's a monologue, I stay away. If it's a dialogue, I'm in. When you say micro, even less, like I would take someone with 800 followers that was hyper niche and responded to everybody and had a real conversation and closed the loop. Um, so I'm really looking for like, what I, what I think a brand wants. If I ran my own brand and we were retail first, I want content. I want super fans that work with me consistently. I want highly engaged audiences. And then I want foot soldiers to help me with doing some of my bidding so that when I get into Giant Eagle, it's amazing if I have a super fan in Cincinnati who I could be like, hey, not only are we homies and you're part of the tribe, but I need you to go into Giant Eagle and I need you to do X, Y, Z, or I need you to bring five of your friends there. You know, can you help me with that? It gives you these bodies all around the country that can go and do that for you. That, that's one thing. And that's where I think brands, early stage brands should be spending 90% of the time. What they usually spend 100% of their time talking about is like, Adam, what do you think? Macro influencers, worth it or not? You know, not Kim Kardashian, but what about a big influencer? I said, most of the time, the big blue chips are not worth it, in my experience. They're very expensive. Um, and if you're going to go long, I would go deep with like a partnership. But you can see one after another brands that did a big, big partnership with somebody and they flopped. Like the, the person wasn't participating. It didn't really go anywhere. So you got to really think long and hard if you're going to get married or do a bigger partnership with someone big. I much prefer dealing in the weeds and going like lower to get a lot of the things I need. All the things I just said are not going to come. The bigger they are, the less likely you're going to get those intangibles. Some influencers put in their contracts. You can use my likeness and I will post it, but I can't guarantee that I will leave it up past 90 days. Well, what value is that? You're going to post it not engage with anybody and then you're going to take it down so it doesn't make your feed look bad that's even thinking like authentic or authenticity wise that's not good for my brand i want somebody who really wants to work with my brand so you got to really think about these things before you get in bed with people uh three things on the back of that uh all facts number one uh two is uh in our experience too which is just for other people to know um we like the micro uh partnerships um the few that we have done paid that are higher in payments um, I don't even know if we have contact with those people anymore. And it went back to my own ethos, like my own feelings about these things being a partnership. I like to email all of our partnerships. I do it like once a month just to say, what's up? And they love that. Like they never, they don't get that very often. I'm just like, what's going on? You know, and 80% will email back. Oh, life's good. Wait, I just ate some more of your snack. Like that's what you want, right? The second piece is you're right about the contract stuff. Once you know, notice somebody's rip, w- ripping out a contract, right? You, you're like, okay, this is getting kind of serious. And the, the piece on the contract, which is I'll do this, this, and this, but by the way, um, it, you can, you can't repost. It's like, whoa, this is kind of getting a little bit outside the zone, right? Of what this is supposed to be at. Third piece is it, it, this should just be about people who really do love what you're doing. It doesn't mean you can't give them 50 bucks and or a bunch of your snacks or some of your drinks and all that. That's part of this thing. But like if they aren't actually living it with you, right? If they didn't give it to their kid or wouldn't, that, that thing's not going to go far, right? They, totally. The, 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 their followers and or everybody that has a tentacle to it, see it, they can actually feel it. Right. Um, and so it, super important on all those notes, you probably have a follow up on that. Yeah. My follow up on, on all that is, um, look, God bless. I love influencers. And I think and we, we, there's plenty of influencers. We pay thousands of dollars to for each engagement and, and they, ha- and, but they're carefully selected and there's certain things. I agree. Once they, once they have the contract and rights usage cap and all this language, they're covering their own base and they're covering their own business. And I think that's fine for Mondelez and Kraft and big brands. Early brands, it's, it's a disconnect. It's the wrong partner. It's like being on NBC on a commercial. You can't afford to be on NBC in a commercial. You might need to get like remnant TV at three in the morning when you're a smaller brand. And that might have more value because you're going to get more niche and more value for your dollar spent. So just... You have to spend the time. You can't completely outsource it. You can't just like randomly throw dollars out there. 
you have to fundamentally believe that these are like billboards and you want to make sure that they are targeted billboards, that they are logical billboards, and that they are not just um, spewing out information and they're not intimate to your brand. So you asked me what I look for. I don't really look at, they send me their media kits. They're, here's my engagement raid. Here's my, I don't even care. I go in the weeds like a mongoose and I look in their feed. Honestly, are they engaging? Are they responding? Do they delete? Are they posting with 17 waters in two months? Or are they, are they like more authentic? And so that's just like a little bit of manpower and time, but it's worth the effort. Oof. I, I really, I, th these usually go to 15 to max 20. I'm going to go one more. I'm going one more thing. Cause this I'll is, go quick. Let's do this it. This is too good. This is too good. I, I I'm going to, when I can't wait to post this, I'm literally going to say, here are the four topics. Like if you're not watching this, I don't know what's going on here. Um, we can, we're going to talk direct to consumer, right? Because uh, it's, in, it, it, it's just to the back of all this, right? It's on the back of all this. We all want to put an ad up or do something digitally and drive them to, we'll talk two components, our own website, right? Which tells the story. You need to have it. It's like your own house. It's your house. Make sure your house is up. Make sure you put some pictures on the wall, right? Make sure you've, you know, swept the, the, the rug and all. I don't know what that means. Um, <laughs> make sure it's clean. Um, and, and then you got the Amazon piece, right? Like we're, we're, we're upfront about it. 95% of our direct is Amazon. It's easier. That's for another episode. We can dive deeper. What are your clients doing? Even if they're not utilizing you, it might not be what you guys dive deep into, but you would just have the, the brain for it. So you can give that, that sort of hundred foot view of what they should be doing. And then maybe they hire that one assassin, right? who can deploy it. Uh, and again, even then it may or may not work. And then the second piece is, do you have the cash to play with, right? You're burning cash so that maybe you let, let's get the lifetime value later, blah, blah, blah. What are you, give, give us the framework there. What start us off with, what are they doing? What should they be doing? And how can they sort of quantify whether or not it's working? So most brands we deal with, um, D2C is, definitely less than 50% of their business. Um, oftentimes it's like less than 10%. So most of them are not investing the time or the energy or the finances. And they're, so it's never going to go anywhere. So we, we made a conscious decision a few years ago to just punt like the $2,000 a month ad spend and like, like, and then like drilling us on row ads. It doesn't work. So it's like, it, you can't go to a blackjack table with like 20 total dollars and like think you're going to win. It's, there's no chance. You might as well just go get food. So first we start there. Like, what are you looking to spend? It seems like it's like, you need to spend like 10 K per channel. Um, if you want to really drive, uh, especially on like your own website, not Amazon um, and really make it happen. And then you need an assassin. So you either need, like, we, we don't do any D to C full blown D to C. We tell clients that up front, we're not a performance marketer. If you want a performance marketer, it's a different person. You want a performance marketer. You can hire assassin. And you know, we have Zach on our team who like really knows this stuff, but like we keep him in, we keep him locked away and he only works on a couple of select clients um, because you need that. And then you need the buying and the sequencing and the emails and the conversion optimization. It's really an all or nothing. If you won't do all of them, you sort of need to not do any of them. So that's our recommendation to brands. Sometimes they get shook. They're like, well, what do you mean? I want, I want you to see, but you got to figure out how much of a pie, what's your revenue goals, what percentage is it? And then can you fund it and get yourself? Cause it's one of those things. If you don't get over to the top of the hill, you're going to just keep struggling to get up the hill and you're going to spend a lot of time and energy on it, which could be used elsewhere. So this is what we recommend. If they want to do it, we recommend Lunar Solar Group, Mute6. There's a lot of agencies that we sit opposite that I would find a partner that has proven that they've done it in your space. You can get references and that they've done it at your price point. You want to make sure they're not going super premium and you want to make sure they're not selling $2 items. Like they have sold comparable products to your products and then you put them to work and you let them do what they do and then you don't drill them every minute you let, them, you let them play it out so that they can have the opportunity to get to a successful ROAS. You also then need to have lifetime value behind that. You need to be thinking about all those different things. Just quickly answering what we do. We don't put our hands in the air and say, like, we're not involved at all. I think ours is like the, is like the gambling. So it's like, I'd rather you give us a social post where it says the next 20 people that go to our website are getting a free month supply of our product. See if it yields anything free, no cat, no strings attached. When they land, now you have retargeting opportunities. You have a secondary conversion, like an email capture or an SMS capture. And if they fill out that they want free product, I would give it to the first group. And then anybody I didn't give it to, I would follow up was right from Mark Samuel. There's no losers that I want. 
You didn't win, but here's what I'm going to do for you. And I would give them a surprise and delight 30% off code because now they're there. You know, they're interested. That's a dialogue that you could have. So we do experimental promotional D2C through organic social, which is what I think brands should do. But when they really want to go to D2C straight up ROAS generating stuff, they got to have somebody who knows what they're doing driving the car. That um, is amazing. Uh, I'm going to do a specific special episode on DTC. Um, I've got a few people. I don't want to go to one of the agencies. I actually want to grab, there's a couple people who are really good at what they do. And they're at a couple brands that I know have that bigger percentage and they do really well. I hope that they're able to do it because they kind of got to, they got to give the playbook, which many will do because it's just like anything you could, I could give you the whole playbook right now and it, and it might not work for you. Right. Um, and then you need all the other stuff, which is just, you know. And Mark, some of the D2C experts that I know that even either work at an agency or have like a cottage agency, like they work at an agency, now they have a smaller one. They'll say to me, Adam, don't send me any leads that aren't doing at least a million dollars in e-com sales and at least 30% of those sales from email. So right out of the gate, that's almost all of my clients off the table. So just remember that all these little brands out there that are thinking about getting in D2C, the stakes are high. It's worthwhile. But it's, you have to be able to fund that with opportunity cost, time, energy, and dollars. Fire. This was straight fire. I'm just pumped. Anyway. Thanks for having me, Mark. Good job. Thanks.